Hello everybody, my name is Brianna Bilo and I'm a meteorologist here with the National Weather Service Office in Grand Junction, Colorado. And this is your January 2024 monthly climate summary. Um, <laughs> I've been away a little while and uh, while I've been away, they've uh, done some rearranging in the office and now I have this gargantuan TV to work off of. So this is the first time I'm doing this. If it's a little rough, if um, you can't see things, whatever let me know um, so that i can make it better in coming videos because i really wasn't expecting to have my entire setup changed before i did this video um, so our uh, story of the month i forgot to change the title i'm sorry this was the highway 145 avalanche near rico um, so as we moved into uh january Mother Nature really did say new year, new me, and we went from this very sort of mild and dry pattern in December to a very cold, very wet, even rather windy pattern um, in January. And unfortunately, when you have a period of milder, dry weather, you tend to develop a bit of a crust on whatever snowpack you have. And then when you get fresh snow, especially heavy, wet, fresh snow and increasing winds, like we saw in January, it leads to increased avalanche danger. Um, and indeed we did see quite a bit of um, several ranges throughout Western Colorado uh, being um, considered high risk for avalanches by the Colorado Avalanche Information Center. And um, a lot of these areas also include mountain passes and some of the higher elevation highways, including Highway 145 near Rico, where uh, a car happened upon an avalanche that almost completely crossed the road. Luckily, they were not involved in the avalanche and they saw it and stopped before they hit the avalanche. But it's just a, it's, it's a really good reminder to, um, you know, definitely take those avalanche dangers uh, very seriously, even if all you're doing is traveling in your car over the highway, because I mean, we've even had avalanches on I-70 before. Um, they can happen just about anywhere. As long as you have a slope and snow, you can have an avalanche. So definitely interesting though, that we were able to catch this on a webcam. Um, there are actually two pictures. You can find them on our Facebook page. The other one shows where the car is, because the car is actually back here using its headlights to illuminate <laughs> this avalanche. Um, it's a pretty interesting set of pictures, definitely worth taking a look. Um, so moving on to our temperatures, our warmest high of the month was 62 in Grand Junction. So while I said that January was kind of characterized by colder, wetter, and unsettled weather, the end of the month was not. The last week of the month, we saw a significant warm up into well above normal territory. I believe at this time, our normal was around 40, 41. So we're a solid 15 to 20 degrees above normal here in Grand Junction. And that was actually a new record for the day on the 30th. The previous record was 58 degrees, which was set in 1958. Um, and kind of as you can see, all of these uh, highs for the month were clustered right around that 30th. And so that's, that was a period of very unusual warmth. We actually set two records at Grand Junction back to back on the 30th and the 31st, I believe. Um, yeah. Coldest temperatures. This falls more in line with that um, idea that January was colder and more unsettled. We actually had an Arctic air outbreak in the middle of the month. I'm sure a lot of you remember it. Um, so our coldest low of the month was negative 23 in Craig, um, which occurred on the 15th and the 16th. While this is nowhere near as cold as I've seen Craig gotten, last year we got down into the negative 40s. That's still pretty darn cold. Um, followed by, you know, Meeker and Durango in the negative teens. Um, and then the negative single digits up through Vernal, and then we kind of get into the single digits above with our lowest uh, temperature in Grand Junction being four. That is actually our lowest temperature for the uh, winter so far. Um, and based on the way February is going, I don't think we're gonna get lower than that. So we'll see. Um, and then 10 in Canyonlands. And you could kind of see that this Arctic outbreak really sort of lasted several days because the Arctic air actually moved in, as you can see, right around the 9th, where we start seeing these low temperatures, um, peaked kind of around the 15th and the 16th, especially in the mountains and up north, uh, as we had a reinforcing cold front come through on top of a fresh snowpack that really allowed those really cold temperatures to come through. 
Precipitation wise, not the best, at least in the valleys. Most of these locations are lower elevation. Uh, the mountains did fairly well, as you will see um, further in the PowerPoint, but the, the valley locations where a lot of these places, these, these um, automated weather observation stations are, uh, did not do quite as well, with only one site coming in above normal, and that was Canyonlands with just six hundredths above normal and a little over a half an inch as a total. Um, the big winner was Cortez, which is actually right around normal. It was only one hundredth below normal at 1.06. And unfortunately, Vernal still at the bottom, only a trace this month, um, which is almost six tenths of an inch below normal. Um, honestly, you know, considering some of the departures that I've seen making these PowerPoints the last several years, this isn't the worst month I've seen. All of these departures are less than half an inch, with the exception of Vernal, because Vernal's just not doing great this winter. Um, but still, it would be nice to see these all green. So maybe next month. Um, looking at our drought update, I'm gonna have to move over here so that you can see this. Um, actually, we've seen quite an improvement here. Uh, we had quite a bit of snow across, especially the Northern and Central Mountains. Any abnormally dry or drought categories that we had there, completely gone. Um, we've also seen the total eradication of severe drought, or D2, across central portions of western Colorado here, with just the teeny tiniest sliver here in far uh, eastern Archuleta County. Um, and again, as I mentioned, I think in the last video where, where there was a little bit of D3 there, that could also just be a little bit of bleed over because they draw these maps at a state level and not at a CWA level, so they don't necessarily know. Uh, that this is where the cutoff is. Otherwise, uh, little change for the rest of it other than the eradication of D2. We still have significant portions of the area either in D1, moderate drought, or D0, abnormally dry conditions. Um, but if we can kind of keep up with these atmospheric river-fueled storms, even though it's, they're warmer, uh, we could see continued improvement here. Valleys will see rain, mountains will see snow, moisture is moisture. <laughs> Um, and then looking at the drought outlook for the month of February kind of goes along with this idea of like those AR fueled storms bringing in a lot of moisture, even though they tend to be warmer um, with this drought removal likely for a significant portion of where we have this D1. And then again, uh, the, the, the D0 doesn't count as a drought category, so it doesn't have a tendency really. But um, and then also like around the edges of our area, we have this pink drought remains, but improves. So um, definitely on the up and up, at least as far as the drought outlook is concerned, especially if we keep staying in this unsettled pattern where we have storms bringing significant moisture, even if it's not bringing significant snowpack. Um, let's see. And speaking of snowpack, as I mentioned before, um, we've definitely seen worse. We saw a lot better last year, but last year was a weird year. Uh, so uh, eastern Utah, the southeastern Utah basin is sitting at about 78% of normal, while the Duchesne and northeastern Uintas are between 80 and 90% of normal. So a little bit below normal by the end of January, but um, definitely could be a lot worse. Uh, and then looking into Colorado, as I mentioned before, we did see quite a bit of snow. Um, across the north and so you can kind of see that with the Yampa White Mule Sink basins in the Colorado headwaters sitting at 90 to 100 percent of normal. Uh, southwest Colorado not quite as good. We definitely saw a more northerly track in January so the Gunnison Basin is at 88 percent of normal. Uh, San Miguel, Dolores, San Animas, and San Juan is at 76 percent of normal. But I mean with these wet systems that we're seeing, it is entirely possible that we could see an improvement there by the end of February as we move into March. And March tends to be a big snowpack building month, so we'll just have to wait and see. Um, and then looking at our climate outlook from the Climate Prediction Center, we are looking at equal chances of above or below normal temperatures here in the majority of western Colorado and eastern Utah with just a little bit in northeast Utah with a slight tendency towards above normal temperatures. And then this area of a slight tendency toward below normal temperatures lurking just south of our border. Uh, so definitely be something to watch. 
And then as far as precipitation is concerned, the Climate Prediction Center is basically saying just a slight tendency towards uh, above normal precipitation across the whole area with areas along the northern central divide maybe moving into a slightly higher category. Um, so instead of the 33 to 40 percent that is this slight tendency, looking at more of a 40 to 50 percent leaning towards above normal precipitation. So just a slightly higher chance. Um, and that is it for the January uh, summary. I will see you again in a couple weeks with February's and also with the winter um, seasonal summary uh, because we are just about done with the climatological winter. Um, and I hope you enjoyed. And again, like if there was anything about this that didn't quite work right or you couldn't see, please let me know because I can kind of tweak this a little bit and get some different stuff to try and improve this setup now that I have to work with this setup. Um, have a good one, everybody. I hope you enjoyed.